Hello and welcome. My name is Mark. This is Riffle Shuffle and Roll, and today you're here to learn a little game called Tuxedo. If it's your first time visiting the channel, be sure to hit subscribe and the bell so you're notified about new games every week. Tuxedo is a card game for two to six players in the fishing family. Its key mechanism is hand management. The objective for the round is to capture as many cards as possible while also creating combos and bonus scoring opportunities. The object for the game is to be the first player to score 100 points or more. Now, this is a fishing game, and for those of you who have only ever played Go Fish, this sort of game might feel very unfamiliar. So if you need a write-up for this game, I've got a link down below that will take you to a written description for how to play. To play Tuxedo, you just need a Rook deck and a way to keep score. Cut the deck to determine who the first dealer will be. Highest card deals first. Each player will be dealt four cards, one at a time. And then four cards will be dealt to the center to form the pond. The rest of the deck will be used to deal out new hands when all the cards are played. Play begins with the player to the left of the dealer. Our dealer is down here in the bottom right of the screen. So up here in the top left is the player that will go first. Now on a player's turn, they are trying to capture as many cards from the center as possible. And there are a few ways to do that. The first way is to capture a single card by matching the number. Here, player one has a 13, so they can use that to capture the green 13. Take both cards and place them aside. And that would end this player's turn. They are only allowed to play one card per turn. The second way to capture cards is to match the sum. And this will allow you to capture more than one card. So player two has a four. And we have a three and a one out here in the pond. So they will play their four and capture the three and the one. Because, if I'm not mistaken, three plus one equals four. They collect all the cards and place them face down. So now it's player three's turn. And there's not a lot of cards out here in the center. I can't show you the other ways to capture. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset the pond. We'll talk about what happens when a player is unable to capture anything here in a moment. All right, so now it is player three's turn. Another way to capture cards from the pond is to create a combo. That is to match a card and create a combination of cards that equals a sum. So player three has an eight. That allows them to capture an eight, to capture a three, the three, and the two. Now you might be saying, hold up, hold up, that's a lot of cards, what's going on here? Well, the eight and the eight match, so they captured a match, and then three plus three is six, plus two is eight. So they also captured a sum. You're trying to capture as many cards as possible on your turn, and this is one of the ways to do it. Now this player also did something special by capturing all the cards from the pond, but we'll talk about that here in a moment. There's something special that can happen when certain colors are out here in the pond. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset the pond again so I can show you what I'm talking about. All right, now it's player four's turn. We're back to the dealer. They're gonna go ahead and use their green 10 to capture the red seven and the yellow three. Now this is a special combination of cards. Red and yellow mixed together makes orange. And that comes into play here. So whenever a red and yellow card is captured together, that player needs to call out orange, that will get them additional points at the end of the round. If the player forgets to call out orange, any other player at the table may do so. If they do, they get the bonus points at the end of the round. Now let's talk about what happens when you clear the table. Well, let's pretend that it's the dealer's turn again, and they have an eight. Here we have this layout. So the player is able to capture the eight and then also capture the two threes and the two. They captured an eight, 
and they captured a combination of cards that equals eight. They just accomplished what's called a big sweep. Whenever a player clears four or more cards from the center of the table, they've accomplished a big sweep and that will earn extra points at the end of the round. So here we have a similar setup, but this time it's only three cards. If a player captures three or fewer cards and clears the table, that's called a little sweep. It's also worth extra points at the end of the round. When collecting cards uh, in a way that will earn bonus points at the end of the round, make sure to leave those groups of cards separate in your collection so it's easier to tell this was an orange, this was a big sweep, this was a little sweep. That'll come into play here when it's time to tally up the score. So sometimes a player will be unable to capture any cards from the pond. They have a couple options. First thing they can do is called building. So if we look here at the dealer again, we're gonna pretend it's their turn. They have a 10 and an eight. So they're gonna go ahead and build. They will place their eight on top of the two. And then they will tell the table that they have a 10. So the table knows that they're building. Eight plus two is 10. They will be able to capture this on their next turn. And in fact, on the dealer's next turn, they will be required to capture those cards. However, any other player at the table can also build on that pile or capture what's already there. Now in a game, you're not gonna know what cards your opponent has. So when it reaches player three over here, they would be able to sneak in and capture those cards. The other option a player has, if they are unable to capture any cards or build, they simply discard a card from their hand. So this player is gonna go ahead and add the 14 to the pond. This card becomes eligible for capturing by every other player at the table. If it just happens to be there when it's the player's next turn, they can capture it. But as you can see, it's not gonna last long. All right, so you've seen all of the ways to capture cards or what a player can do if they are unable to capture a card. Now let's go ahead and talk about what a whole round actually looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the table. We're gonna look at a round real quick and see what happens once each player has played all their cards. So back to the player left of the dealer. Up here in the top left corner, we're gonna have them play the 10. With their 10, they can collect the four and the six. And that ends their turn. Player two only has one option here. They're gonna capture the seven with the seven. Player three is unable to capture a card. So they're gonna add their 13 to the pond. Here, the dealer does not have anything they can do. They're unable to capture a card or build. So they're gonna go ahead and throw their 11. All right, now that you're probably starting to see how this works, let's go ahead and just quickly get through these three cards. All right, so if we have reached the end of a hand, not a round, but a hand. Each player has played all four cards. So now that everybody's hand is empty, the dealer deals out four more to each player. Play continues until all of the cards have been dealt out. Now in a four player game, the cards can be dealt out evenly, but in some games, there might be an uneven amount of cards at the end. So you just deal out the cards evenly and any leftover cards in that final hand are added to the pond. Once all of the cards have been dealt, played, or captured, the round is over and it's time to tally up your score. Whoever collects the most cards earns 15 points. If there's a tie among players for who has captured the most, each player in the tie gets five points. 
Any oranges called are worth 10 points. Any big sweeps are worth 10 points. Any little sweeps are worth five points. And any fives captured are worth five points. Go ahead and collect the cards. Deal passes left from the previous dealer and continue playing rounds until one player reaches 100 points or more. That player wins the game. And that's how to play Tuxedo. If you are enjoying Rook Month, go ahead and comment down below and let me know which has been your favorite game so far. And also look down in the description for all of my links leading to my Reddit page, my Board Game Geek page, a Discord channel that I like to hang out on, and my friends at GameRules.com. Well, that's it for now. Until next time, keep on playing.